Okay, so we're gonna have the Spanish um, side once again. Yeah, Pixel Hungry, thanks so much for subscribing. 21 months in a row. Pretty amazing. Um, we're gonna have the Spanish side, Pedro, once again up against Stefan. Um, we won't be seeing Stefan's first turn with the hand cam, but everything else we will be able to see. So Perfect. don't worry, guys. We will be able to see the hand cam, just not the first turn. Um, because Stefan forgot to <laughs> to click record, <laughs> <laughs> which is like I knew things like that would happen. Yeah, when I organized this tournament, I was like, okay, this is the first time. Not everything will be perfect. Some things will go wrong. Some things will go right. Hopefully, more things have been going right. Um, I think people tuning in um, for the past what three hours is it? Yeah, three hours. We've had over two hundred viewers all this time. So I'm hoping the public is enjoying this. The good news is, Stefan's playing a Zoroark deck, and we know their priorities on turn one are always basically the same. Let's get some basics, let's try and find a Lily if we can. Stefan kicks off with a Sneasel, and he's got himself a Nest Ball at least to kick things off. He's doing his usual thing of scouting prizes, and uh, he'll probably end up grabbing himself something like Ditto or Zorua here. As is usual with Zoroark players, they're going to try and establish their draw engine to start things off. Yeah, Stefan, as we saw in the previous games that we casted off him, um, he does take his time to um, check his prices, figure out stuff, and the Ditto is like establishing as a Rua and as against Nisel at the same time, right? It mm -hmm. gives you all this flexibility. We know how much Stefan appreciates the Ditto being an option, right? Because he, he doesn't evolve until the very last minute, so we'll have to see. Stefan with just a Kukui, but does find a couple more basics at the very least. Yeah. Another was... Zerua and Sneasel. Yep. And now we can see Scott. Now we can <laughs> Pokemon see. Pokemon hand. Yeah. I mean, I would assume he already had those two basics and he Kukui'd into double yeah. Lele. Because otherwise, why would assumption. you not play the Lele, right? Yep, yeah, I make the same assumption. We see Pedro. He's going to treasure away an ultra ball and he's just going to keep dumping the hand so he can get himself an attacker actually he's just going to go for an inca here so he's going to forego a turn one attachment of beast energy it's a little bit tempting sometimes just getting an early ultra beast energy attachment because it's such a big card for this matchup especially when he plays no choice bands this is your only damage buffing option he's really thinking about whether he wants third inca or ultra yeah he's actually going to change his mind get that down with beast energy just start the threat. And then Cynthia for a fresh six. Yeah, not a bad start for Pedro. And having the beast already fixes all the damage he could possibly want against Lycanroc and against Zorark, right? So that's the one card you definitely want to find if you're up against Zorark. Just saves you on energy every time, which is insane. Yeah, it's a really big deal. We have often seen a lot of the Ultras cutting choice bands just to improve their own consistency and improve their odds of, you know, um, dealing with uh, Zapdos players. So Pedro only having the one Beast Energy, finding that super early is a big deal for him. So Stefan's drawn another Pokemon for turn. It's a Zoroark. He can Lele for a new supporter here. He's got the option of evolving Weavile, which he hasn't taken just yet. There's also the option, of course, for some Mallow shenanigans if he wants to guarantee some things, but obviously Weavile are not doing much damage here, so instead he's just going to go for a recycle. He might be evolving the bench. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable shout if the other one's in deck. Yeah, definitely. Um, off of the Cynthia, what are you expecting, though? Because he's not going to get an attack off at all. No, yeah. I think I think he's basically looking for maybe just energy on like a rock rough. Just to have again like the double threat of Weavile and Lycanroc. He's choosing to evolve into Muck, maybe because he's fearing potential Marshadow GXs. I know Stefan's actually recently played Ultra Necrozmarine Cans and he did play Marshadow GX, so maybe he's sort of taking inspiration from his own list and saying that some people will be playing it, so Respecting a Marshadow and evolving straight into a Muck, also denying potential Lele's or Jirachi's along the way as well. 
Yeah. And he does get himself Nest Ball fighting energy, so I think it's as much as you could hope for by setting up this double threat. Yeah, and the Mark will actually save that Rockruff from a Lele into Guzma into KO, so definitely a pretty a pretty nice play from Stefan. Unlike the previous match, right, where we saw that Ditto become Zorg until like 20 turns later, he commits the Ditto this time, and it definitely pays off um, based on what Stefan had in his hand. Pedro is going to commit energy to the active. He evolves double Malamar. I think he's doing this because his own list plays four Viridian, but he actually gets super punished for this. That's actually so sad. Yeah. Oh no, he can still he can still knock out Weaver. Yeah, yeah he can still knock sorry. Out. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I thought I thought he was punished. I uh, yeah, for a second you made me think it too. <laughs> <laughs> We're chilling. Oh, interesting. He doesn't recharge to the other ink. I guess he's holding switch anyway. But we haven't seen him at all. Sort of proactively charge up bench stuff. Yeah. So far, we haven't seen him do it like at all, really. Yeah, in the previous matches, he always had the option, right? There were always energies in the discard pile, but he wouldn't load there, so he's definitely relying big time on the switches. <laughs> Chad is saying next time should be all commentator tournament. <laughs> 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 We should have Omnipoke and then invite you as well, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Genius. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're seeing Lily. We do see a DCE come out, which is nice. The Reddies can start threatening this Ultra and Crosma, but you never really feel comfortable when there's double Malamar in play. Beast energy on an Ultra and a Crosma. There's always the threat of it just going south. We may see him Ultra Ward to find Lycanroc to maybe limit one of these Malamars, because you're never too happy trying to two-shot through him, especially when you play Weavile and Lycanroc. But he yeah. is actually just going to go for it. He's going to try and two-shot this one and make it difficult for... Well, hope that it's difficult for Pedro to switch and get back into the active. Yeah, which with that top deck, actually, um, he will be able to, right? Yeah, he's got there. Yeah. So this is a pretty big deal. Interesting that he didn't uh, didn't try and gust and deal with the Malamar, forcing more from Pedro. At the time, Pedro didn't have a supporter at all. He's just top decked into this Lily. I mean, would that have forced more, though? Because, I mean, obviously Stefan doesn't see Pedro's hand, but if he knocks out a Malamar, then the Ultra is on the bench. Yeah, that's true. With I mean, with just a switch and one... And Psychic Recharge and Attachment, he gets a knockout. I mean, I guess it's the same thing, except... So, what I'm thinking is... Stefan recognizes that he probably... Or maybe he's planning to just win the game by knocking out three Ultra Necrozmas... Rather than trying to chip away at the Malamars, like we saw mm -hmm. Jimmy do. And I think that's viable, because he does have the Weavile, right? Like, Jimmy had True. no way to get a 1 kill on an Ultra Necrozma beyond Dangerous Rogue. But Stefan mm -hmm. definitely can, so... I guess now you would try to get another, like a back-to-back -back Righteous Beating, and then you still have Dangerous Rogue to deal with another Ultra and Grosma. Yeah. Um, but Pedro is pulling far ahead here. And once you get through this Beast Energy, you feel a lot more comfortable as well. Yeah. I guess the Beast Energy turns this Ultra and a Crosma into a bigger threat than like other ones, so just yeah. deal with this as quickly as possible rather than leave it around. But Stefan... Picks up a Pokecom, which we never know. We never know if he's going to go. To <laughs> In this case, he's going to. He's also got Ultra Ball as well, so he might be trying to develop Zoroark and Lycanroc. Yeah. Using, using his own Muck means he can't uh, Lele, though. Yeah, I was, I was thinking like Malo would be the ideal to guarantee the DT, but yeah, he can't Ultra for Lele for Malo, so. We'll see if that comes back to biting him. If he doesn't find DC here, he would be in a lot of trouble. And he finds him Allo, ironically. <laughs> it's, a, it's just after the trade, yeah. Yeah, that's a big whiff from Stefan. Um, his previous hand obviously didn't um, allow for much else. Yeah, and off of the Kukui, he whiffs yet again. Last chance saloon, not getting him over the line. Yeah. I mean, generally, if he had found energy, he could have even risked the flip from Rockruff <laughs> to mm -hmm. KO the, 
the ultra, but pff, he's in a rough spot now. No, yeah. no energy in play. No rock rough in play. Mm -hmm. um, and he plays only one basic fighting. Remember, chat, because he's the Weavar build, so it's the one basic fighting that you can see on the rock rough already. Yeah. All the others are units, which he can't search for. It's kind of wild that he found his one basic energy first, unless he's yeah. stadium for it for it earlier. I can't remember, but he can't get any more value from Viridian, so he's in a really rough spot now. Yeah, everything with... into anything feels strange as well. Yeah, because you're gonna lose the energy anyways. I mean, and like even retreating into alone and mock doesn't make much sense because now you t you already have the Malo, so you don't want the mm -hmm. the Lele activated. Hmm. Stefan definitely taking his time with what's the best option here. Yeah, and retreating I think like all the options are just really bad, right? Yeah, okay. I think retreat into Muck is going to be what he ends up going for. Yeah, It's not ideal, but at least it means that Pedro doesn't have to just, you know, attach an energy, take another prize, go down to two, and start charging up another Ultra Necrozma. This way it forces Pedro to at least, you know, find another attacker to put on the board. Mm, but we'll no, it, he does because of the beast energy. Oh, wait, that goes... Yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, he's hitting for 130... And he can establish the other Ultra Necrozma, so... Yeah, well, let's do that then. <laughs> That's <laughs> <Yeah>. pretty busted. <laughs> yeah, and then with two threats, basically three Malamar set up. Well, not three, but two Malamar set up. And he'll have Stretcher for Lele to just Guzma up whatever he needs to KO, so... Yeah, this is all looking, looking great for Pedro. Stefan with a couple slower turns not dealing with the Mallies. It's just meant that Pedro's been able to build up into this board. I see the temptation for never touching the Malamars because you are so Weavar focused. But it has just ended up that one trade wasn't enough to get him into a chain of knockouts. And now he's falling very behind. The beast energy pull from Pedro so early on in the game, his opening hand has given him so much value. Yep. Yeah, that has really made a difference, and you're gonna wonder if not playing choice bands is the right way to go, or... Because obviously that offers more space for consistency, as we see with uh, Pedro's increased um, stadium count. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like in my experience playing Malamar, I always... Like, there were so many instances where I wished I had choice band, even when I was playing it, so... Yeah, um, even the one-off choice band in the deck, almost as like an A-spec type card for yourself, so that you yeah. can distortion door and knock out Lele's with Giratina. <coughs> like, that yeah. alone is such a huge thing that opens up for you with the deck. Yeah, when you can KO a GX with a non-GX, that mm -hmm. can potentially be a game-winning um, yeah. play. But you're right. We've seen Pedro with supporterless hands so often that he's just thinking, let's make that happen a bit less and have as many draw supporters yeah. and consistency cards as possible. Because yeah. there's always that argument. Because actually, I, I guess an interesting fact about this tournament, not a single one of them is playing Let Loose, right? Yeah, none. Not a single player in this tournament is playing the Let Loose Marshadow, which was not intentional. Yeah. Um, the argument I always give players um, who argue that Let Loose into a dead draw hand or a dead hand is terrible, it's like, yes, of course it's terrible, but if your strategy to beat someone is to use let loose on turn one and try to beat them that way it's like how good is your deck really right so <laughs> i mean having let loose as an option to disrupt is really good but it can't be like you can't hope to beat players off of a turn one let loose dead draw right mm -hmm. that can't be your game plan going into a match yeah i mean it turns sometimes like 90 10 matchups into <laughs> like 80 20s if you can have that kind yeah of thing. true but and I mean, Let Loose is super popular in Standard currently. It's been weaving into lots of... Oh my goodness, he's having to go for a sleep flip here. Stefan whiffing the correct energy. Going for the icy wind. <laughs> only doing 10. <laughs> That's a big yikes. <laughs> yeah. Pedro's just got game off of this now. Yeah, it doesn't even find the... <clears throat> Yeah, doesn't even get the flip to go his favor. That's a bit unfortunate. And just showing off with the extra energies here. <laughs> a <laughs> little not? bit of PM going on here. <laughs> no.
No, these obviously guys, no BM. These guys are buddies. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, you gotta I, show them. Yeah, I. Th- this happens a lot with all the juniors that I coach. Like, if they're about to beat me, they're like, "No, no, please don't concede." Yeah, and then they try to go for like as much damage as they can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bring up the healthiest target on your on your side of the field as well. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. It's like I'm, I I want to make sure you really know why I beat you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, so. um, pretty pretty unfortunate series for uh, Stefan. He couldn't catch a break. He never found the right energy or energy at the right time um, for his Pokemon, and he just fell too far behind. Right, but he will be going first this time. Um, hopefully. No need to Kukui on turn one into double Lele. That must be very frustrating. And we'll see how he can pull off the comeback, or if he can pull off the comeback here. Pedro, man, loving that beast energy. Such a big deal in the matchup. He got so much value. Meant he could knock out Muck. Meant he was knocking out um, that Zoroark very really quickly as well. Just gave him so much value. So that's a card that he's going to be keeping his eye on for the next game as well. So big, big card in this matchup that he needs to try and dig out once again uh outside of that he's has, having to juggle those abilities all over again we never actually saw a weavile come into effect once again there's another matchup where we keep saying that weavile can do the stuff but it's not getting over the line at the moment but, uh it does mean that pedro has to be very concerned about his own use of leles his own use of jirachi his own use of uh Mali's. so that's something that pedro still has to struggle with for this entire series one thing that's interesting is that when you play these builds of Zora Rock Cario and Zora Rock Weavile, you fill so many of your bench spaces with not trade that if those Zora Rocks are targeted, it really does limit the amount that people can do because they've only really got space for one or two Zora Rocks and it can yeah. really spiral out of control. Sometimes, you know, recently we've been seeing Zora Rock with just extra Lycan Rocks in there, so it means that they only need to put down Rock Ruffs and Zora Rocks. It just means that you have more trades available throughout the entire game. And, you know, when you can trade, you can find whatever you need. And playing these, like, third stage ones, sort of trying to shoehorn them in for certain matchups could be crucial, but it also can get really punished if people can take some big tempo Zoroark knockouts. Yeah, because, like, you do want to have Zoroark to have access to all the other Pokemon, but then all the other Pokemon are the ones that really put in the work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, there's always that balance of... Um, what do you want to do? What can you do? It can get, it can get tricky. And I do think that Zora is definitely the hardest deck to to play purely because even like every trade is a micro decision, right? Which mm. you can either get right or wrong. And if you start getting those wrongs, then it's not that the opponent is playing better than you; it's that you are hurting your own chances to to win. Yeah. Stefan, I'm gonna kick things off here. Pedro with. A good opening hand for everything but supporter. Um, so he's hoping for some top deck shenanigans. The good news is he has lots of ball search outs and double Lele in his deck. So he's still, you know, not out of it just yet. Stefan, though, he's got himself a bunch of energy cards to open up with. As well as Nest Ball and Lily. So everything's looking pretty reasonable right now. Uh, he's got a good start. He's also got a Sneasel in hand. So he can start developing possibly that Ditto again if it's in deck. If not, just a Zerua get a turn one attachment going and uh, kick on from there with a lily but yeah this time he's definitely not whiffing on energy cards that already yeah. both options in his hand yeah and, which is ironic right maybe that's too many energy or i guess it's one more energy than you'd like to see yeah on turn one um turn one unit into a dc into a lycan rock pressure onto an inke or a malamar um well an inke because pedro won't have malamars that seems very decent and it's definitely what he'll be able to pull off Interesting, we see him attach the unit before the DCE. If you attach the DCE, it means you have the option for both. This way, it means you have to find yourself a Lycanroc to attack with next turn, or you're attacking with Zoroark, I guess. If you attach the DCE, you can attack with all three of your combination. Also interesting that you nest ball for a Zerua first and then comm for a Ditto later, rather than nest balling the Ditto out the gate. Regardless, they're both on board now, and we're also staring down if he wants to play Sneasel. But in the end, he just passes it over to Pedro not the top deck he was looking for he can bin this Giratina for free at the very least he can get an attachment onto an ultra but yeah no draw support's a little ugly for him 
Yeah, very underwhelming start for him for sure. Very uh, polarizing to what we've seen from him so far. I mean, he's got the he's got the things he needs turn one. Like you'd like an extra in K. That's about it. It's yeah. just there's no real follow up for him right now. He's still just living on a top deck. Yeah, and the in K is probably gonna end up going down unless I mean Stefan could arguably just pressure the Ultra Necrozma, set up the two hit KO. Though you are trading because, like. Pedro will be able to attach another energy and deal 100, right? Mm -hmm. And then you won't be able to one kill the Ultra. So is it better to take the initiative and set up the 2 KO yourself first rather than allowing them to do it for you? It's an I interesting guess. one. I think I think especially when your opponent's dead drawing, I like just dealing with Inkes. Yeah. And you can see Stefan just says, nah, I want this easy yeah. prize right now. Yeah. If, if Pedro is, you know turn does escalate it's usually gonna require some abilities to get him there so he's got the weavile pressure in the back he's got ditto already so he's happy to just uh deal with the active and try and make this claw slash go the distance we can yeah. see stefan as well he's holding on to nest ball for potentially more zeruas here i think i like not evolving into ditto and then just nest balling a zerua there's not yeah. much else you need this turn yeah okay but so he's gonna calm instead <laughs> this is also kind of fine i don't hate it no, no, I don't so many hate supporters it. That it's fine. It's just, um, it's interesting to see how he plays the Poke comes. Um, yeah, the establishing the mock definitely helps in stopping out a lot of Pedro's outs. Yeah. A lot of Pedro's outs. Yeah, now all the Ultra Balls, uh, Mysterious Treasures, and Lele's, essentially 10 cards have mm -hmm. now become cards that will not help you if you top deck them. And Jirachi, so 11. And Jirachi, yeah. Yeah. Busted. Good choice on Muck. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have done that, but that's why he's in this tournament and I'm just talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> we see Pedro go for a gusting play. I imagine he won't attack here, yeah, because of a Sorola. So just trying to buy himself a turn here. It's all he can do with his hand. Yeah. And if the Muck can't move, you can knock it out and then you gain those outs back to top deck your way into an actual hand. So Pedro doing all he can right now. The fan does not play a switch in his list, so it has to be trade into Guzma. Okay, Nothing so... in there. Yeah. But he doesn't really I mean, sure you lose the mock, um but if you bench the grammar, you can re-establish it immediately, which is <laughs> yeah. pretty decent. Yeah, that still seems really strong, yeah. to be honest. And Just you can even mallow. Mallow for next turn, yeah. yeah. I like it. If you're playing this mallow, what are you wanting for next turn? Is it just like as simple as stretcher Zoroark? Mm, I think so, yeah. Top yeah. deck Zoroark, then stretcher, because that sets you up very nicely. Yep. Um, you could argue stretcher Guzma? Yeah, that's also just powerful. to have the guaranteed Guzma in case you need to snipe something on the bench, oh, which you probably won't. Bench, he doesn't bench the Grimer, so he's just saying this muck can go. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it, it is interesting because like he went out of his way to set up the muck to stop those outs, uh -huh. and now he's giving up on that and he's opening yeah. up the outs again. That's interesting. Pedro actually waiting. Oh. He's just he's trying to buy as many as many top decks as he can handle. Yeah. Let's see if Stefan put a Guzma on top. This yeah, will be would... interesting. Now that he didn't take Mark, you got to think that's the next card he has, right? Yeah, and it is. Yeah, yeah. it's like we're psychic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely Stefan looking like to be super in control of this game. Um, even if Pedro gets a return KO on the Lycan Rock or on the Zorak with another psychic attachment like that gets him two prizes sure but he's so far away from winning the game mm -hmm. that's true but at the very least he gets to draw an extra card effectively if he knocked out the mark he only draws one prize this way he can draw two prizes yeah and get himself out of this funk but by not knocking out the muck all those outs are stripped away from him it's only physical supporters that help him yep. offer these prizes let's see if he can get there as he continues to draw more energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's not gonna cut it, uh, though. That's gross. 
That is definitely not gonna cut it here for Pedro. Stefan, never gonna play judge in this situation. <coughs> She's gonna be content with trading and attacking into the Ultra Charisma. Mm -hmm. Re establishing Zerua seems really strong as well at this point. Yep. Maybe even double Zerua? Yeah, I think if he was gonna go double Zerua, he probably would have played the Kukui first, I would have thought. Yeah, fair. Because you have a higher chance to. Kukui then Nest, yeah. Yeah. Instead, he's just going to hold on to it. Doesn't need the additional cards, in his opinion. He can just keep this Kukui around for potential damage. And uh, this is just heartbreaking for Pedro. <laughs> it's yeah. so rough. It really it's is. So rough. Going to try and buy himself a turn. Maybe make Stefan pay a retreat, thanks to the resistance that Giratina has. Yeah, but all these plays feel like, like Pedro is trying not to lose, right? Rather than yep. accomplishing anything that will get him closer to winning the game. Of course, yeah. So... I think it's gonna be a matter of time for um, <clears throat> a matter of time for Stefan to close this out, and hopefully we'll get a, a more exciting game three. Mm -hmm. That's what makes Zorox like one of the most dangerous decks. It it's always just gonna keep gaining that advantage more than any other deck because you just continually gain hand advantage on people. So if you're if you're ahead in tempo with Zorox, you're just gonna be ahead the entire game because you can just draw so much more than the opponent. So it really punishes slow turns more than any other deck. Stefan debating whether or not to comm this Lele instead. As always, he's going to choose against the comm. And, just <laughs> and get a Pokemon get so that he can still <laughs> contemplate the comb. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, every time. <laughs> now he's thinking about Pokecom. So yeah. I guess this could be a good time to address things in the chat. Sure, yeah. Um, like, may, um, I think War Turtle is uh, Benjamin Pham. Yeah. Um, so why did I choose to make two groups instead of a top eight bracket? Um, I felt like a top eight bracket and just playing a best of three and eliminating players directly was a bit um, not as exciting. Whereas this way, like, if players lose, they still have a chance to to come back at some point mm -hmm. um going through the losers bracket and winning the ace match yeah which we are seeing right now um mostly that because instead of just having four five six seven games total we have 13 which means more pokemon and which means more um hand cam show off as well so <laughs> i guess that would be yeah. the main reason why Pedro gets himself as a porter card. Happy days. Yeah, finally. He attaches metal to the ultra and also the escape board. Interestingly enough, if he hadn't attached, he could have gone for a tappy jaw play this turn. <laughs> but maybe that's what he's setting up for. Maybe retreat here. Next turn, Guzma tappy cure. And then he's like even on tempo. But I mean, he's still got no in case. It, life's not looking good for him. Let's make that yeah. clear. But and he's. Tapu Cure can buy him some more turns, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he already used Tapu Cure once this tournament, so <laughs> this time I'm hoping it'll be a bit more effective. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> and no, no, like this is all in good fun. Yeah, you love Pedro. This is all in good fun. Pedro's favorite GX attack. Oh my god, it's actually going to come off Trap Muck, Tapu Cure. Oh please, Trap Muck, Tapu Cure has got to be his only player, right? When, when? Oh no! Wait, no! Well, I mean, he no. can still do it, but he loses the medal. No! Oh, he's uh, gonna GX? I can't knock anything out. He can't GX yet because. Uh... Oh, yeah, true. Oh, please, Tapu Oh, he's already he's, seen it now! He's, he's gonna he's do seen it. it late. Yeah. No. He was probably contemplating the GX and then he realized he couldn't oh, do it yet. Oh, no! It would have been so good. I mean, he's still super dead. But <laughs> it would have been so nice if he could have tapped cured. He's just he's remembering back to that game one today against Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, Pedro. He's thinking, do I still do it? Do I still pay retreat and do it? No, he's just gonna pass. Oh, Pedro. He could have been the chosen one. He could have, yeah. I mean, he can do it again next turn, but just not against the mock. Well, I get, yeah, he can retreat. Yeah. Oh, 
Maybe maybe he's planning on like if Stefan Oh, that was a big Twitter sign. <laughs> I forgot to make that small. <laughs> um if if Stefan does not have Rainbow, Pedro could generally deck like he could trap that I think monk. that's all he's going for now. Yeah. This is better for trapping. I guess that was always his play. Yeah. He top decked a second Guzma. So that changes his play to I'm just gonna try and trap and win. And this could actually work. Palpad's gone. Yeah, I wish Pedro would look at Stefan's discard ball to Pedro, see how many Pedro's got a bigger brain than us. Benching the Lele would actually always lose him the game, I guess. Yeah. I guess he's saying I can only ever win. That option only came about because he's set, he topped at the second Guzma yeah. when we were already talking about Tapicure like the turn before. But as soon as he top decks the second Guzma, this is easily like the best play. Yeah. And then, holy, he just wins now, I yeah. think. Yeah, Stefan is not attaching that one energy he has. He's not trading for the DC, so I assume he has no way to retreat that mug. And he Man, does Pedro not play the, the rainbow energy. Pedro is the best. How? What a, what a match. And this is why you play the rainbow, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's the counter argument right here. We're seeing it. Yeah, Galaxy, Galaxy. Brain Pedro. <laughs> That's the way. Wow. There's enough energy played by Stefan. He's spread energy onto all of his threats. He's going to have a look through his deck now, and either he's conceding immediately or he's not. I think there's been enough because he's been paying retreat on like the Lycan Rock and stuff as well. Pedro took out a DC earlier. I think there's not enough to move this mark. Yeah, I would say it's pretty <clears throat> pretty certain at this point. Slow clap for Pedro. Lost yeah, it. that was very impressive. Very, very impressive. Yeah, <laughs> there's a concession from Stefan. Instead of going to a game three like I assumed we would, Pedro actually ends up winning the ace match. Wow. That's actually such a nuts game. That See, was. These are the things you need to keep track of. When your back's against the wall, you can't win conventionally. You've got to think, what on earth can I do to get back? And take a look at your opponent's discard pile. See what's left. See a four retreat Pokemon. Make two and two together, and you get there. That's amazing. Yeah, we were joking about the the Lele Tapu Cure, and Pedro just showed us. <laughs> Pedro <laughs> just showed us. He literally yeah. schooled us here. Yeah, I mean... I guess he played around third Guzma by not doing the Tapu Cure. I guess that's the only thing that you play around. Yeah. But hey, it's an extra card that you're playing around, so. Yeah, so huge props to Pedro. And by winning the ace match, Pedro advances to second place in Group A. So we have our first two semi-finalists. We have Jimmy Pendarvis in first place. We have Pedro Torres in second place and the first place of group a will be playing against the second place of group b and second place of group a will be playing against first place of group a of group b i mean so these two players will not be facing off against each other um, we are actually done with group a for now and we will be moving on to group b which features rukans ultra negrosma malamar deck towards ultra negrosma malamar deck and then Robins and Azul's 60 card mirror match of Zapdos Ultra Beasts. So, yeah, um, I don't know about you, uh, Joe. I think a 10 minute break could be yes. good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a 10 minute to... break. I know it's super late in the UK as well. Oh, it's um, fine. It's fine. Yeah? Okay, so guys, um, we're gonna have a 10 minute, 10 minute break. It's um, 32 p like 3 32 p.m. for me. Um, 9.32 p.m. for you. Shall we be back at 45 at quarter two? Yeah, works for me. Yeah? Okay, so we'll be back in around 13 minutes, guys. Uh, quick break for both of us. We've been doing this for over three hours, so um, we'll be right back with the action of Group B. Don't go anywhere. Thank you so much for your support, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 